All right, well, good morning. So good to see all of you here at First Baptist Church of Holland here in Holland, Texas. If you don't know me, my name is Pastor Jeremy. I serve as the pastor here, and we're giving kind of some others a break today. So I know you'll have to uh, just sing with me today. So let's stand together. Uh, we're going to sing River of Life. seated for a moment. Um, today, uh, for the first time in a formal context, uh, so I'm going to introduce to you our new chairman of the deacons, was just voted in yesterday, Mr. Clint White. So let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Well, good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church Hall, and we are absolutely delighted to have each and every one of you here today. If you're visiting with us, if you would look in the seat pocket of the chair in front of you, there should be a visitor's card there. If you would fill that out, put it in the offering plate as it goes by, we would appreciate that. Also, you may see a new orange card in the seat pockets of the chair in front of you. That is a prayer request card. If you need to fill that out, we just ask that you please do so. If you have a prayer request, that way we can pray for you. Also, if you're joining us on Facebook, we appreciate you doing so, and we look forward to having you at the next time that you can be here. Just a few quick notes for you really quick. Preteen camp starts tomorrow. Yes. So please bring in prayer for the campers and the counselors going to camp. More specifically, 40 people are going to preteen camp. I just saw Jeremy's face and his eyes are whew, 40. 40 people going to preteen camp. They're going down to Lakey, Leaky, I mean, whatever it is. Four hour drive. So, Cade was asking yesterday, how many times are we stopping, Mom? Like, it's a long time in the car. So, also, Vacation Bible School, put this on your calendar. It's coming up August 4th through the 7th. If you have any questions, or this is all caps, if you want to volunteer, they need all the help they can get, I promise you that. 
and they will put you to work. Please see Miss Nikki or Lindley. There will be a state of the SBC, the Southern Baptist Convention, meeting Sunday, July the 28th at 4 p.m. Everyone is encouraged to come and learn more about the SBCs. You guys know a couple weeks ago, Jeremy went to Indianapolis. They had a great meeting up there. And uh, the media is going to tell you what the media tells you, but the actual people who are actually there can actually give you the insight of what happened, right? It's kind of how everything works. So if you are wanting to know more about that, please show up to that meeting. Uh, Jeremy's been working on that for a while to give you some great uh, information there. The adults prayer um, meeting for this Wednesday night, they will not have that meeting, okay? So if you normally come to that Wednesday night, they will not meet this Wednesday night. They'll continue next Wednesday, okay? Uh, the Baptist women are collecting school supplies for students in Holland schools. Uh, there are school uh, supply lists on the Welcome Center in the foyer. Uh, if you have any questions, please see Ms. Kim Arnold. Our food pantry met this Thursday. I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Raleigh Bell and all of his helpers. He heads up this thing and runs it for us, and they fed 39 families and people this week, okay? 39 in Holland. That's a great work that we continue to do behind the scenes. You guys show up uh, and, and give to that. And it's, a, it's a, just another way that this church gives back, and we appreciate it so much. And, and you may not see it, right? You may not see it, but it's continuously helping out your community. It's an awesome, awesome thing. Yes, sir? Yeah. That is awesome for sure. Your Deacon of the Week this week will be Mr. Teddy Gaines. If you don't have his phone number, please write it down. If you need something and you can't get a hold of anyone, Jeremy will be four hours away. Um, and I don't know about self-service down there. It's non-existent. Miss Katie is shaking her head. Nope. So if you need something, please call Mr. Teddy, and uh, he can get you squared away for sure. All right, youth kids, if you're going to camp, stand up. And if you're a counselor going to camp, stand up. We got them all. Uh, we're going to pray and pray over these kids and these counselors for this week. If you would bow your heads. Dear Father, we just thank you so much for a wonderful day to come here to FBC Holland and, and come and worship more about you. And we just thank you so much for everything that we're able to do. And uh, we're thankful for these kids and their continued um, search for you. And we just ask that you open up their hearts and their minds this week. Keep them safe as they travel. Um, keep them safe as they're at camp. And just open up their hearts and minds to receive you. Um, and we just ask that they're touched by your word. Um, we just ask that you um, continue to bless them. Be with the counselors. Um, help them keep uh, everyone safe. And uh, help them also encourage as they... Um, themselves will be questioned, and then they will have to help and uh, answer those, those questions that these kids may have, but we just ask that you give them the knowledge that they need. Um, be with us now as we go into this worship service, that we may do it in a manner that is pleasing unto you, and it's in your name that we pray, amen. Uh, isn't, it, isn't it good to see all that God is doing before our very eyes? I mean, have you ever had that many claps during a, a, an announcement time? I mean, it's just, it was beautiful. I, I love listening, sitting there listening to that. Um, we're going to sing this next song. It's called, it's called uh, 10,000 Reasons. And one of the reasons that we are singing this uh, is that at the last verse, there's a verse in there that says, On that day when my strength is failing... The end draws near and my time has come. We've all had those moments in life or walked through those moments in life where we feel like we just don't have any strength left. Uh, we live in a fallen, broken world. But at the end it says, but still my soul will sing your praise unyielding, knowing that 10,000 years and forevermore I'm going to praise you and bless you. And so uh, let's stand and let's sing this uh, very uh, hymn together. Bless the Lord of my soul and all my soul and worship His holy name. Sing
sing like never before and all my soul I worship your holy name the sun comes up it's a song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Lord of oh my soul oh my soul and worship that happens. I'm still going to worship, even though I just broke a guitar string. Hey, get crowd calls, Ryan. We appreciate it.
you are great. Lord, we want to, in our highest moments of life, but also in the valleys and the times where our emotions are all overwhelmed and out of whack, Lord, we still want to sing praise to you with our body, with our, with our brothers and sisters of Christ. We want to say, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. So, Father, I pray today that no matter what people have come in here with, the emotions that they have, the feelings that they have, the uncertainties in life, the anxieties of life, even depression, Father, I pray that today we would cast our cares upon Jesus and that Jesus would re redeem and transform us. Father, as we get ready to take this time of, of offering, and offering and tithes, Lord, I just pray that you would use these, these monies that are given by your people to continue to advance your kingdom and glorify your great name among all the nations. I pray all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Uh, at this time, I'm going to offer uh, Ms. Mr. Russell and Ms. Lorraine to come forward. Uh, they're going to read our passage today, Psalm 42, and then pray over us. And then after they're done, we will uh, invite our, if you're taking up the offering, I think we have some young ones today. So when they start to pray, if you're taking up the offering, please come forward and grab the offering plates when they start to pray. the deer pants for the stream of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the, of the Jordan. The heights the heights of Hermon from Mount Mazar, deep calls to deep, deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, 
oppressed by the enemy. My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Let us pray. Lord, uh, just uh, bless our time together. Uh, we enjoy being in the house of the Lord with like-minded people. We thank you for everything you do for us. Um, it's, a, it's just a wonderful day. Please bring the, bring the words that Brother Jeremy has for us, uh, the interpretation. We thank you for everything you do for us. Lord, just uh, bless this time and this offering so we can continue your work. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us all. And Lord, just teach us to love you more and more every day. Amen. Amen. All right. If you're taking the offering, come on forward. So as they collect the offering today, we're gonna, I'm going to just start by singing this song for you. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Nicole told me that you have never sung this one before, and so I'm going to introduce it. And so you just sit and listen to the words today um, as they, they collect the offering. And man, the sorrows lamb of God. By his own betray, the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid. And silent as he stood accused and beaten, mocked and scorned. Father's will, he took a crown of thorns and all that red cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah. Spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Sunset's free, there's free and deep Oh, that red cross, my salvation Where your love poured out over me Now my soul cries out, hallelujah Praise and honor I would ask you to sing we're going to sing this last verse together now that you've kind of got to figure it out. And we're going to close with the chorus. So let's sing these words together. This is our hope. This is the redemption that we have in life. 
This is where the, the, the sting of death has been removed and the, and the, tongue, the stone that has been rolled away. Let's sing this together. The stone is rolled away. Behold, the empty tomb. And hallelujah, not be praised. He's risen from the grave. that this morning. You may be seated. all over again quick costume change yeah are y'all with me this morning yeah yeah we need to have some energy today all right are y'all with me though okay good yeah he's kind of worried here we need to strengthen the coffee or something huh um but before i begin let me just say that uh charles spurgeon he once said that the Metropolitan Tabernacle was like a beehive. There was always people coming and going, doing, doing ministry. And I want you to know that uh, I think that's a great picture of the church throughout the week before we gather together here in these kind of corporate settings. Um, but FBC Holland, let me just share, y'all have been an amazing beehive this week. I mean, this church has been buzzing, excuse the pun, with just life all week long, Monday night, our task force came together, uh, which has been tasked with figuring out how do we connect what's happening on Wednesday night to Sunday morning. So they're answering that question, collecting data. And uh, this week we had people up here praying on Wednesday night. We've had uh, our student ministry committee has been getting ready for the year, doing some planning up here. Um, we've had, as you, as you can tell, we've had VBS uh, up here uh, getting their, their ready. So thank you to all those who came out to help get all of this put up. Isn't it look great, by the way? I mean, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, also, you know, uh, we, son, Thursday with the uh, serving 39 families here in the community that are in need. Uh, I heard recently somebody once said they can't hear when their stomach is hungry um, because it's hard to hear things whenever you're starving. And so being able to provide that need gets us opportunity to, to share the gospel with others. I mean, let me just say, F.E.C. Holland, do you see that God is at work here? Oh, I don't think y'all are awake this morning. Do we need to start over? Man, I, I just want to say, like, thank you for being a gospel-centered beehive here at F.E.C. Holland. Uh, it's an encouraging time to be here. If you're not a member, it's time for you to become a member and join our hive, okay? A lot of things happening. we love for you to serve alongside us, King Jesus. So let's pray and ask God to bless our time in his word. Oh, Father, this word is uh, so relevant to our lives, living here in this fallen and broken world. Uh, Father, I just pray this morning that you would help us to see our feelings through the gospel, uh, that even in those moments of despair, even in those moments of uncertainty, even those moments where we are overwhelmed as people living here, Father, I just, I just pray that we would just see the hope of the gospel and that we would preach it to ourselves every single day. Father, people are in here today going through what Psalm 42, what this psalmist is going through. And so, Lord, I pray that you would open their hearts and speak directly to them today. Bring them comfort in their times of mourning. Bring them, uh, bring them peace in the times of difficulties that they might experience in this life. Father, as always, I, I just pray that you would minimize Jeremy so that you can maximize Jesus. 
Because there's only Jesus that can heal and mend and transform their lives. I'm just your messenger, your servant. You are the Messiah, the Savior. And so let us never forget who is really running this church and who is leading this church and the path that you would have it go. Speak now, for your servants are listening, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have your Bible, Psalm 42 is where we will be. My title is Overwhelmed, Words of Comfort to a Cast-Down Soul. As you make your way there, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite Bible narratives. Uh, 1 Kings 18 is my favorite, one of my favorites. It's got uh, Elijah, and, and Elijah is getting ready to defeat the prophets of Baal. Now, if you remember this from maybe Sunday school or you remember this from your Bible reading, this is where there's 400 false prophets, the fa- pro- false prophets of Baal, and they are leading God's people astray. And Elijah says, hey, let's have a competition to see who has the real God and who has the fake God. And so they build an altar, and uh, the False prophets go, and they cry out to their false god, Elijah, which is the cool guy he is. He begins to mock them, Um, and then in the end, Elijah prays. God sends fire down and consumes both altars. In fact, uh, Elijah had them dump water on it, and God licked up even the water that was on the altar. That's how amazing and powerful our God is. The people turn from their false idols, from these false prophets of Baal, and they uh, capture them all, and Elijah slays them kills him. I mean, I'm talking, that has got to be one of the coolest days of ministry ever, right? I mean, could you just imagine, y'all would be talking about that for years if I built an altar and God consumed it with my prayer for, a, for, for fire, right? I mean, you just, Elijah's the man. Like, nothing could go wrong after that day. Well, he gets a message in 1 Kings 19 from a woman by the name of Jezebel. And Jezebel sends a messenger to him and says, I vow that by this time tomorrow, what you have done to the false prophets of Baal, I will do to you. I'm thinking, you know, Elijah, he just had this really cool moment. What's he going to say? Like, bring it on, girl. Right? Bring it on. I mean, do you know what I just did for the Lord? Like, you've seen the Lord work. But instead, this moment uh, causes Elijah great fear. And Elijah runs and flees for his life. He's in the wilderness. He asked God to let him die. He was so overwhelmed by his circumstances. He was so overwhelmed by his life being on the line. He says this in 1 Kings 19, verse 4. He says, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. Fear had gripped him, and the circumstances that surrounded him had overwhelmed him to the point that he, he wished that he was, he was dead, that God just, God, take me now take me now. Joby Martin, he talks about this psalm from this perspective. He says that this is when the dark nights of the soul come into our lives. One pastor calls this spiritual despair. John Piper calls it spiritual depression, which he got from a book by Martin Martin Lloyd-Jones called spiritual depression. The question is, have you ever been there before? Maybe some of you, are you there right now? Have you, are you dealing and wrestling with the, with the dark nights of the soul? Many of us, we have been through those deep and dark moments in our lives. You know, those moments that keep you up all night long. Those moments that make you feel like you're suffocating in this life. Those moments where you feel like all is lost and hopeless. Have you been in such despair that you thought, about taking your own life or wishing that God would just end it all for you. Let me tell you, these are real emotions that real people have. But before I dive into Psalm 42, which talks to these emotions, let me just let me just give you caveat two things from the beginning. Number one, if you're feeling that way today, I want you to know right now that there is hope and you're not alone. You are not alone in this life. Look around this room. You have brothers and sisters right here who are willing to walk with you through whatever it is that you're dealing with. And there is always hope in the gospel. That there is hope even in the most darkest days of despair that you might be facing today or that you will face in the future. But that leads me to number two. Listen to me. If you're in a point in your life right now where you are so down or depressed or in despair or overwhelmed, I want you to know, do not be too proud to get help. That there are people in this world that have been gifted by God to counselor, and so to counsel you. And so please find a biblical counselor that has, the, has a, a counseling method that's saturated with the Bible and the gospel. 
But this leads us to a question. What are we to do? How are we to get through these moments where we go through times of deep spiritual despair? Because make no doubt about it, you are either in there today or you will be in there in the future. It's part of living in this fallen, broken world that we're going to have these emotions that overcome us and make us feel like we are hopeless and that we are lost. Psalm 42 provides an answer to this question of how we get through these days of spiritual despair. But before we get there, we have to understand what the psalmist, this psalm is about, how it works, and then what this psalmist is experiencing in these moments that we can relate to. Uh, so number one, if you notice underneath verse 42, right before verse 1, there's these little words that say, to the choir master, a mascal of the sons of Korah. So first off, this is a, a psalm that was given to a choir master. A choir master means that it's a, a psalm that is to be sung. So psalms are songs and poems, which means that if it's a choir master, it's a song that's been designed to sing in public in a corporate worship setting. Do you know why that's the case? Because very simply, music has a way of shaping our emotions. Like whenever you go into a locker room to get ready for a big game, you're not listening to elevator music, right? You're listening to what? Jock jams. I know that just dated me. Uh, pu- you know, pump up music, right, to get you ready for the game. Uh, music has a way of shaping our emotions, and the reality is, is that because God did not just create us to be logical thinking beings. He created us to have emotions. We are logical people with emotions in physical bodies. You see, this is what we call, in biblical language, human anthropology, biblical anthropology, the study of how humanity was created by God. And theologians say that we were created, or the theologians that at least I think are right, are the theologians that say that we're a psychosomatic unity, which is a very fancy way of saying that we are body and soul integrated into a unified whole. That means that we can think. That means that we can feel. It means that we can touch and we can see and we can taste. We are a very complex creation that's created with all these different what we call faculties. But here's the reality. This song is designed to be sung in corporate worship as a way to influence our emotions. Listen, there's two types of churches that we've all seen, and I pray that you and I here at FPC Hall, we can be a balance of the two. Uh, you've ever been to those, those, those churches that are all mind? All theology. It's all about thinking. It's all about getting into the, the deep weeds, and I think we should get into the deep weeds of theology, but a, but a church that's all about thinking can be a bit what? can be a bit cold and rigid and kind of feels like you're walking into a morgue. Not very much life. But then we've been to some churches, right, where it's all emotion, no thinking. And these, emo- these emotional churches, which is all built on however you're feeling, just do it, can kind of become chaotic and rambunctious. God in this text shows us that there needs to be a balance between how we think and how we feel. The psalm is going to show us the balance, the proper balance between emotion and logic, theology. And the reason that this is so important is for two functions. When you when you are going through times of difficulty, you need two things. You need to remember who God is and what he's done. So you need to reflect on him which we're going to see in this text, but you also need the assistance of others. You need a body of believers to come around you and hold you up when you go through those dark nights of the soul. The psalmist shows us this very clearly in verse 4. Look at it real quick. Just the first three words there. He says, these things I remember. Verse 6, he says, I remember you from the land of Jordan and Hermon, the Mount Mazar. He's he's reflecting on what God has done in the past. In verse 8, he says, And at night, his song is with me. He says, oh, these things that I'm remembering, they they stir a right emotion in me. Listen, we need to make sure that our feelings are attached to biblical truths. But secondly, this psalm provides us with instructions on how to get through life. Uh, This psalm, it says, is a teaching from the sons of Korah. Now, you may not know who the sons of Korah are, and that's okay. The, the Korites were a small group of priests in the Levitical system. And 2 Chronicles 20, verse 19 says this is what they were to do. The Korites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. So 
So their job was to come together to sing and worship and praise God with the, with the people of God. And so this psalm is a psalm that was sung in worship, but it was designed to be a maskal. Now, to be honest, nobody really has a full grasp on what this word maskal means. Uh, maskal is an alliteration of the Hebrew. So in the Hebrew text, this is the actual word that's in there. It's the maskal. And so we just transliterate it. So that way you read it and you're like, I don't even know what that means. And you move on. All right. So uh, there's a lot of theories about what the maskal is. And the reality is, is that uh, I think John Piper actually has it the best. John Piper says that the root word of maskal is the Hebrew for to make someone wise or to instruct. So therefore, this psalm is a psalm that's designed to instruct us of how we go through times of deep despair. It's a corporate instruction for how we get through those dark nights of the soul. And we need this. As human beings made in God's image, redeemed through Christ, we, we need these type of psalms in our lives. Again, feelings can be fickle, but they're also a part of our design, and sometimes feelings can overwhelm us. Sometimes our feelings can overwhelm us so much that they actually begin to hinder the other human faculties, including our brains and our logic. So you might be saying, what kind of feelings is this man feeling? Um, it's a great question. We see three feelings in this text that you, have, you and I have all felt before. Uh, number one, he feels abandoned. The psalmist feels abandoned. Verse one, he says, As a deer pants for flowing stream, so pants my soul for you, O God. You know why a deer, why, you know why a deer pant? It's because they're thirsty. That's why he's panting for a flowing stream. He's dying of thirst. Have you ever been so thirsty that you literally thought you were going to die? I have, all right? I was on a Marine patrol with my Marines. We were doing about a five-click in the middle of the desert in the middle of the day. We had no water about halfway through this, uh, through this time, and my Marines are coming over the, the radio, and they're like, we have no water. We're about to die. Just kill us now. Finally, we came into a village, and they gave us water. By God's grace, we survived. I'm here today. But, man, this is what this guy is feeling. He's like, I am I am. I am thirsty for you. I'm, I am detached, it feels like, from the one source that my body needs right now, which is water. You know, on, earth, on average, a person can only live for three, three days without water. But do you know what happens to a body in those three days when you don't have water? Your mind begins to get altered. Your kidneys start to shut down. Your liver actually begins to go into shock. You begin to have low blood pressure, and eventually you die. And this is what this guy is feeling in this moment. He's feeling this, this moment of abandon. He is longing. He's in such spiritual despair that he is longing for God. Look what he says right after, as a deer pants for flowing streams. Here it is. So pants my soul for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. You see, his, his feelings of despair come from him because he thinks that he's been abandoned. My soul longs for you. I'm thirsty for you. I'm abandoned. I feel like I'm abandoned by you, God. Have you ever felt abandoned by God? I mean, some of you maybe feel that way today. Maybe you're going through a very difficult circumstance in your life, and you just feel like, God, are you even there? I'm, I'm, in such, a, I'm in such a hole in my life that, I just, that the only thing that I can think about, the only thing that I long for is just, just you, just to make your presence known. Maybe you're in a financial situation where you're just so stressed out because you wonder, how am I going to feed my children tomorrow? Maybe you're under such financial pressure that you feel like you're suffocating, that, that there's no way out, and that, you're, that everybody's abandoned you. Or maybe your marriage is just really wrestling and is rocky right now, and you feel like, man, yeah, we can put on a good game face when we come to church, but we, we're, just, we're, just not, just not, we're just not doing well. It feels like God's abandoned our marriage. It feels like God's abandoned me with you, and I don't know where to go from here. I think one of the worst ways we feel this as people is when we have a wayward or rebellious child. You have a child that's running from God, and you sit there and you feel like, God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you not revealed yourself to my, to my child? And, and you begin to feel these, these feelings of, of suffocation. You begin to feel these feelings of, like, I'm thirsty for you, Lord. Show me. I, I, is this my fault? Have I done something wrong? The psalmist says, listen, I know what you're feeling. 
Whatever he's going through, he says, I feel the same way. He said, but I'm going to show you in just a moment that there is a way out of it. There is hope even in the midst of despair. You see, we have a real problem in our churches, and probably even at this church too. One of our real problems is we are afraid to be real with one another. This is a corporate song. So obviously this guy's like, hey, here's an experience I've had in my life. Let's share it with the church. So because you are all having the same problem, so let's sing together about it. See, we live in a church day today where everybody can't be real. Everybody's so good at putting on their church face that even when their soul is panting for flowing streams, they walk in here as if they have it all together. You see, this psalm is written for the people of God to sing together in corporate worship to tether our feelings to the truths of God's words. In other words, we need each other. You need each other. I need you. This guy wrote this psalm. He says, I need y'all because, look, my soul is panting right now for God, and I feel he's abandoned me. Come to be my, the church that gathers around me to show me that he's real and that he's still there and that he's going to help me through this time. Look what he says in, in some of these parts. He says, my soul pants for you. My soul thirsts for God. And he, later on he says, why are you cast down, O my soul? Then he tells his soul, hope in God. Yet when all these breakers and all these waves has gone over me, he says, God, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning? And then at the very end, verse 11, he just ends the psalm very abruptly. He says this, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. He doesn't say it happens right now. He says, hopefully it's going to come in the future. And this is the real and raw emotions of our darkest times in life. But yet so many people come to church thinking, I just got to have it all together. I can't share that I'm going through a moment of despair. And typically what happens is then, once we find out you're in despair, it's typically almost too late. This is everywhere, by the way. This guy is, this guy is crying out to God with real and raw emotions. I was having lunch with some pastors and some church planners a couple of years ago. And uh, we were eating, and I, this is kind of the mentality that's built around our church, churches, church cultures. And as I was, I, he asked me to pray, and I was glad to pray. Um, I always say, like, if you pay, I'll pray. And so I said, I'll be glad to pray. And so I've, I've prayed over the meal as a joke. I'll pay for your meals too, okay? Jeez, looking at me so spiritual. You're going to make me depressed. Uh, so I got done praying, and that passed. He, he looked up and very, very, he was being funny. It was like a total joke. And he looked around the table with all the church planners and pastors there and he said, can we all agree that that was probably a theologically accurate prayer? And we all laughed and we said, of course it was. But see, here's the reality. I think so many of us, we come to the church and we think we've got to have it all together. We've got to have those accurate theological prayers. We've got to make sure that our lives, we've got to pretend that our lives are in line with the gospel that we're not going through any struggles or any pain. And listen, that is not how Jesus wants you to come to him. He doesn't want you to come to him with a mask. He wants to come to you to come to him real, with raw emotions, to ask questions like this guy asked. He says, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning, God? He wants you to come with real emotions. My, I'm thirsting for you. Where are you? Jesus says, listen, one of the beautiful things about coming to Jesus, he says, you can come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. He says, come to me how you are. Come to me with your real and raw emotions. And God says, I will take your emotions, and I will line them with my word. And that's how we get through deep and dark days of this life. Number two, his feelings are internal. So not only does he feel abandoned, he also has these internal feelings that are taking place in his life. Look what he says in verse 3. My tears have been my food day and night. Verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Verse 9. Again, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? His, his feelings are getting the best of him. His feelings are overwhelming him. He's eating his tears day and night. That's what we call a dark night of the soul. That is the overwhel overwhelming feelings he's having. These are internal and real struggles in his heart. Let me be very clear about something here, all right? I am not a trained counselor. 
I'm a theologian and I'm an ethicist. That's what I do. But there are some of you in this room who are really struggling with real emotional problems that are causing anxiety or depression in your life. Which is why this text says, listen, those real emotional problems are things that you should bring to the Lord and you should find somebody who can help you get through them. Some of you might be feeling depression or depressed, which is a downward spiral. Famous biblical counselor Jay Adams said this, that he thinks depression is like a downward spiral that enslaves one in hopelessness and guilt, thus bringing on a slowing down or cessation of activity called depression. Listen, beloved, if you are feeling the same feelings that this man is feeling, I want you to get help. Come to me. I'm not a counselor, but I will, I will recommend you to a good Bible-believing, gospel-centered counselor. Share with people within your church group that can help come alongside you and help you out of the hole that your emotions have put you in. This guy knows what you're feeling. But number two, not only is he dealing with suffering from these internal feelings, he also has external factors pressing in upon him. Verse 3, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Verse 10, as with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? This guy's life is bad. Not only does he have his own emotions going on, but he's got these other people out there saying, look how bad you are. Look at, look at your despair. Where's your God now? Let me just tell you something. Listen, beloved, be careful who you listen to during times of depression. It's unwise and unhelpful to listen to people who don't believe in Jesus when you're going through spiritual despair. Firstly, because they won't understand, and secondly, they're going to question God's goodness, making you feel even more abandoned. It reminds me of Job. When Job loses everything, including his health, his friends come to him and they're like, you messed up, Job. Even his own wife comes to him and she says, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and just die. Job speaks back. He says, no. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? And then the Bible says, Job chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Beloved, listen. Be careful who you are getting advice from in the times of spiritual despair. Make sure that they are godly men and women who can speak the gospel and Bible truths into your life. Because if not, if you don't have those kind of people around you, they will lead you further into your despair. Have you ever been there? Some of you there now? The question is, how do we get through these raw emotions that we're feeling that God has created us with? Well, there's three ways in this text that we see him overcome. Number one, he remembers the, Lord work, the Lord's work in his life. Remember the Lord's work in your life. Verse four, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. He says, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. He says, listen, when my soul is in agony, I remember what God was like. I remember what God has done. I remember how even God allowed me to lead in procession God's people. I remember what God did in the land of Jordan and the Hermon. He says, I'm going to go back to the past. And I'm reminded of those times when God got me out of some of the most difficult and hard seasons of my life. And I'm going to hope that he's going to do it again. That's what the psalmist says. He says, just reflect on what the Lord has done in your life up until this point. Remind yourself of his goodness. Remind yourself of his past work. And that will sustain you in those moments where you have the darkest nights of your soul. But number two... He says, not only to remember the Lord's work in your life, he says, number two, don't neglect corporate worship. Don't stop gathering with the body of Christ. Verse four, he says, I lead them in the procession to the house of God. This was a corporate song. See, many people don't understand what we are doing here on Sunday mornings. I think many of you may not even understand what we are supposed to do here or what this is all about on Sunday mornings. Listen, this is not just simply fellowship. In fact, if you want just fellowship, you can do that a lot better at a Super Bowl party or some other event. In, in fact, this is not about me entertaining you. Uh, if you want to be entertained, trust me, I'm not your guy. 
you, you go watch a, a movie or go, go enjoy a, a, a stand-up comedian. In fact, if, this is not about you just singing songs that make your emotions joyful. If you really want, if, if that's the case, if you want good songs that make your emotions leap off the page, then go to a concert of your choosing. What is this really about? Why are we even here this morning? Here's the answer. Corporate worship is about meeting with the people of God to experience the presence of God for the praise of God. It's about God coming to you. You come together and it's like, this is like the only place in the world where people gather together and God's presence is like, here you go, in mass. And then he receives praise from the presence of his people in mass. Like, what we are doing here on Sunday morning is a transaction between God and his people. And if you're lost, his future people, I pray. The psalmist says, don't stop worshiping with the body because the body is going to build you up in your lowest times of despair. But, oh, how many people deal with church hurt and they're like, I'm out. Right? Right? Or when they go through a difficult season in life, the last place they want to be is where? The church. Let me share with you a friend of mine. My friend uh, is a worship pastor. He's probably an amazing worship pastor. We've been friends for over a decade now. And he was fired from his first church. You know why he was fired? A new pastor came in. And a new pastor did not like that the people loved my friend. You see, he had an ego problem. He wanted all their love. He was not going to divide their love with this worship pastor. He was, he was very insecure in his feelings. And so he got rid of the music pastor because he's like, we want to go a different direction and the people like you too much. I want them to give me all of their praise and worship. My friend was devastated. He and his wife were up all night, literally like this psalm says, the, the tears have been his food day and night, crying and weeping like, what? Why did it, how did this happen, God? Where were you? You've abandoned me. To, I called, you called me. I've done what you've called me to do. And one guy comes in and he's like, I don't like you because they're not worshiping me. And so he just gets rid of me. You know what he did that next Sunday? He could have done anything. He could have said, I hate God's church. He could have said, I'm going to sleep in. I deserve it. You know what him and his wife did? They went to church that next Sunday. They went and they sat in the back and they just cried. Just cried. As they stood and people were singing. These are the songs that my friend had been leading in worship his whole life. He's like, I couldn't even utter the words, even though when I heard the people singing them, I knew they were true. When I asked him recently, I said, Tell me, you know, that experience at that church. He says it was the best thing that we ever did. To go to a church, even though one previously had just hurt us so deeply. And now he's serving in a church in South Carolina where he's been for over a decade doing amazing works. And I, I mess with him all the time. And I say, hey, you need to, the Lord tells you, you need to come work for me here in Texas. He just laughs. But I'm serious. You see, my friend shows us that in the darkest nights of the soul, we don't neglect to worship with the body. We need the people of God. We need the people of God to remind us of God's goodness when we are eating our tears day and night. Lastly, he says, preach the gospel to yourself. Preach the gospel to yourself. Two times, verse 5, 11, he says, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Verse 11, hope in God, for I shall again, not right now, but praise him, my salvation and my God. Listen, one of the most dangerous places you can be is in your mind by yourself in times of despair. Because we have a tendency to tell ourselves all kinds of lies, don't we? I deserve this. What did I do? Why is God not here? Why have you abandoned me? Blah, 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 blah. Why am I cast down, oh, my soul? And this writer says, listen, when you get into those moments, preach to yourself the gospel. Preach to that moment. I'm cast down and overwhelmed, but I am going to continue to hope in God, for I know that one day these feelings will pass, and once again I will joyfully praise God. 
How does this preaching of the gospel come into our lives? Where does this gospel hope come from? And look at the two phrases that he has in, in verse 5 and verse 11. He says, hope in God for I shall again praise him. And here it is, my salvation and what? My God. These are possessive terms that are also mentioned in verse 11. I love this about the psalmist who's going through this time of despair. He says, I'm going to still hold on to my salvation and my God. Now, this word salvation is the, is the Hebrew word where we get a root from Joshua, which means to be saved. And by the way, uh, if you didn't know, so the Hebrew of this word, my salvation or salvation, was translated into Greek and then was translated from Greek into Latin. And guess what it was translated from Latin into English? Jesus. Isn't that amazing? He says, my salvation, he's ultimately saying, this is my Jesus. My hope is going to come in my Jesus and my God. And listen, this is one of the beautiful things that when we preach to ourselves Jesus in those moments of despair, in those moments of the dark night of the soul, why? Because Jesus is the only one who can give us hope out of it. Think about this psalm back through the lens of the gospel then you can comprehend two things. Number one, Jesus knows what it's like that you're experiencing in this world. And number two, he did something about it. All right, number one, think about it this way. Jesus knows what you're feeling like. In the Bible, when we go to the Gospels, we see Jesus' interaction in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus, his soul is so troubled as he gets ready to go to the cross for our sins, to take the wrath of God for us He's praying in the garden. He says these words to his disciple. My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Jesus knows what what Psalm 42 feels like. In fact, in Luke's gospel, it says that he was so much agonizing and from his feelings that great, what looked like great drops of blood were falling to the ground. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows the feelings that you're having. Number two, not only that, he also knows what it feels like to be abandoned. When Jesus was on the cross, he spread out on the cross and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? Because at that moment, Jesus became our sin. And God in his holiness turned his back on the Son for us. He knows what you feel like. He knows what it's like to say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you forgotten about me? Where are you? He knows. Oh, he also knows not just what the internal feelings are. He also knows what it's like to be taunted by others. Remember the thief on the cross? What did he say? He says, hey, Jesus, if you really are Jesus, why don't you get down and get me down with you? When people walked by Jesus as he was hanging on the cross, they said to him, what? Oh, he did all these wonderful works. He performed all these miracles, but he can't get himself down. Call your angels, Jesus, to come get you down. Jesus knows exactly what you feel when you're in Psalm 42. But do you know what the beauty of Jesus is? The beauty of Jesus is that not only does he know what it's like to be overwhelmed, secondly, his sacrifice was designed to bring your suffering to an end. This is what we call the resurrection. This is what the resurrection is all about. It's about transforming and redeeming all things for his glory. It's about transforming the world the way that it was supposed to be in the beginning. My salvation in my God says, Jesus, come and give me that hope. Come and transform these emotions from sadness and despair and gloom to joy and gladness in you with your people. He says, preach to yourself the hope of the gospel. And you preach knowing that that one day you will praise God, the God of our salvation, because all these feelings that you're having right now that are unhealthy in a fallen and broken world, one day they are all going to go away. One day all these feelings of despair and hopelessness and being overwhelmed are going to end. And what you need to do is you need to preach the gospel to yourself even when you don't feel like it, even when you think God's abandoned you even when you're wrestling with that dark night of the soul. I'm going to encourage you with this as you preach the gospel to yourself. Listen, you may feel like you're abandoned, but in those moments, don't abandon the gospel. Don't run away from it. In fact, run to it. The psalmist says, one day I'll praise you again, I know, because you are my salvation, and you are my God. 
Let's bow our heads together. Beloved, listen, in dark nights of the soul, in dark night, maybe you're going through that today. In dark nights of the soul, pray. Remember the Lord's work in your life. Don't neglect to gather with the body. Get the help you need and preach the gospel to yourself. Preach Jesus to yourself. Don't let the lies of your head or the lies of the enemy take your eyes off of Christ in the midst of overwhelming circumstances. You know, I hear people say all the time from Christians, I don't know how people get through this life without Jesus. And the reality is you can't. You can't get through this life with this type of hope without Him. Some of you today, you need to call upon the name of the Lord and turn from sin and be saved. Some of you need to recognize that the only way out of your situation is to follow Jesus. Is to put your hope in the gospel. To cry out and say, my salvation my God. Once you do that, you will now have the tools needed to get through the darkest, darkest moments of life. So in just a moment, I'm going to pray over you, but after I get done praying, my information will be on the screen, and if you need to talk, uh, reach out to me. I will resource you, I'll help you in any way that I can, based on how God is working in your heart right now. Father, we just come to you now in this time of prayer. Father, help us to sing again if we're in a moment of despair. Help us to preach to ourselves the good news of Jesus. Father, help us to have hope in the midst of when we're feeling hopeless and lost. Father, let us not neglect to worship with the body of believers. Come alongside one another and hold each other up. To sing and remind us of your goodness and your greatness and your work. To remind us that what you did then, you can still do today. But also, Lord, help us to be a people who, are, who know that it's okay to not be okay when we walk in here. But we know that when we come together, that we're to assist each other to say, we don't want you to stay there. If you're hurting, if you're broken, if you're in grief and despair, we won't want you to be there too long. It's okay that you're there now. But we as the church, founded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ, move you. I want to move you from where you are to where God wants you to be. Father, let us be that type of people. Father, if there's anyone in this room today who is struggling with spiritual despair, Lord, I pray that you would bring them hope. Hope through the gospel. If there are any here today who are saying that there's no way out, that today they would see Jesus as their only way out. And that they have the courage to come and to Say, Jeremy, today I turn from sin and put my faith in Jesus. But Lord, if they are a believer, I pray that they would sing, remember. I pray that they would gather. And I pray that they would preach to themselves the gospel. If they need help, that we can resource them with the help that they need to get them out of this slump of despair. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the only hope that we have in you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My number is going to stay on the board for a few moments. You just take a few moments to pray, and then we're going to stand and sing together. So just take a few moments to pray, and then we'll stand and sing. You keep working with the Lord. But if you're ready to stand and sing, let's stand and sing Living Hope. Jesus is our hope, even in the midst of despair. Let's sing this together.
How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain that could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into Father, we just thank you so much for this day that we get to gather with your people, that we get to encourage one another, that you get to share your presence with us, and Lord, that we get to praise you. Father, help us to leave here today knowing that no matter what we're experiencing, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're dealing dealing with, we can do it through the hope of the gospel. 
that we walk out of here going, yes, I'm struggling, but I know I have my salvation and my God to walk me through it. Be with us now as we get ready to leave this place. Send your people into harvest so that you may